Mr. Backrooms is wishing you a very Merry Christmas. Level 137. Pitch Black. Survival Difficulty Class 4, Unsafe, Unsecure, Medium Entity Count. Level 137 is the 138th level of the Backrooms. It takes on the appearance of a dark residential structure that is presumably infinite. It is a high risk but high reward level to explore. Despite being such a harsh environment, it has a notable human population due to the profitable business of scavenging. Description. Level 137 is a nightmarish maze consisting of stucco walls and incandescent lights. It is shrouded in a pitch black darkness which can only be illuminated via level 137's lighting fixtures and cannot be lit by any other light sources. Numerous trials have corroborated this claim. The level is abundant with supplies such as almond water and radios but is teeming with hostile entities. There are an innumerable amount of light switches, a majority of which are non-functional and electrical outlets in this complex. Some appliances have been recovered from level 137, though none of them operate and have been hollowed out by default. In the distance, ceiling fans and air conditions can be faintly heard alongside the typical wails and shrieks of the occupants of level 137. There are closet doors in some rooms, which contain a variety of clothing. Depictions on the clothing can vary from solid colors to graphics of various geometric designs. There is a very distinct rotten odor which is emitted through the vents which has been traced to numerous corpses found slumped against the walls of level 137. It is easy for one's sanity to decline rapidly after being exposed to this caliber of abnormality, so it is mandatory that you be stocked with a plentiful amount of almond water. Exits are copious, but it proven burdensome to reach as the excessive quantity of hostile entities residing in level 137 makes it difficult to exit without injury. Cabinets in some rooms may contain almond water in large quantities making it a profitable yet treacherous way to obtain the liquid. It has been proven difficult to navigate due to its high entity population, but apparently entities have active and inactive hours. It is believed that every day level 137 will enter a blood hour phase in which lights will be tinted red and entities will manifest more often. There is also a period of time in which level 137 will enter a cold hour where entity count would be reduced significantly. The incandescent lights can be unscrewed and fixed to a battery to create a makeshift flashlight. A notable example of these flashlights is the Jorgensen device which was used in one of the first expeditions into level 137. These devices would prove useful at navigating through the level but could also attract unwanted attention from entities. Colonies and outposts due to the resource-heavy areas of level 137, it has gained the interest of many groups which have sought out to construct outposts to maximize profit from such resources. The level is often explored by groups of wanderers who will often set up outposts so the following list is most likely incomplete. Ford Operating Base Midnight Fought Midnight is a MEG outpost constructed for research and military intervention. It is mostly defunct as all operations there were halted until recently. It consists of multiple bets, boxes of rations, and a weapons cache. It only has a population of 24, though this number fluctuates from time to time. When set up it only consisted of one room, though this has been expanded to 23 adjacent rooms over the decade. On January 12, 2016, a militant group exchanged fire with MEG operatives. The militant group, known as the People's Syndicate, seized four rooms belonging to the Fought Midnight. Since then, the MEG sent volunteer squads to help the denizens have Fought Midnight. Syndicate forces were then pushed back to the last room. MEG tacticians decided to hold their positions and start the enemy out. The Syndicate tried to push further into Fought Midnight, but were dispatched by MEG militia forces. This was known as the 137 Skirmish. Since then, Fob Midnight has been a profitable outpost of the MEG and its allies. Recently, an initiative to double the size of the outpost was started. When the initiative is finished Fob Midnight will be able to sustain a larger population. Luxembourg District The Luxembourg District is a collection of outposts pledging loyalty to the People's Syndicate. It consists of 62 adjacent rooms and has a population of 82 people, which was previously 103. Since this district is located in the harsh environment of level 137, they do not venture very far beyond their district's barricade so it is hard for them to interact with other outposts in proximity. During one particular battle between the Luxembourg district and Fought Midnight their barricade was breached by armed forces of Fought Midnight resulting in 23 syndicate casualties. Residing entities The entity population in level 137 is large and adverse as the level is a suitable environment to host many of these entities. Some of the entities residing in level 137 include but are not limited to smilers. Insanities. 
Vaseline Skin Stealers. Clumps. Chima Behind Documents. Trial 137-A. Report. Mission Statement 1 should not pursue goals that are easily achieved. One must develop an instinct for what one can just barely achieve through one's greatest efforts. The greatest of fear is fear of the unknown, yet we must overcome even the greatest of fears in the pursuit of science. For this very reason a dozen operatives have been tasked with venturing into level 137 to document the environment and conclude if proper settlements can be achieved in such in place. Antecedent Explorations Level 137 was discovered by crawling into an air vent in level 4. Explorers of a regiment compass point quickly discovered that their flashlights are rendered useless by the supernatural darkness of level 137. The aforementioned explorers were drawn to an incandescent light which lead them to a corridor. Upon entering the door of the end of the corridor an insanity made an attempt at dispatching an operative. The entity was dispatched quickly but in the process it alerted other entities in proximity. The operatives were stranded and fall for their lives. The stucco walls were painted in gore and volleys of bullets flew throughout the endless trubrosity. The room reeked of decay and our operatives have once again escaped the clutches of death. After exiting with their lives and minimal information one thing was concluded in the struggle. We must venture into this dark abode once more for the betterment of society. Trial 137. At hour zero, we set foot into the chamber in darkness with our minds set for betterment. We crept into our little area of the same corridor a brave operatives fought in previously. As we found the room explored by the previous explorers, we were reminded of the struggle. It was as if we can feel the terror resonate in our spirits. We set up our weapons cache in the room quietly marking it as our forward operating base. We ran basic tests to cut down the time while we waited for the second team to arrive with the rest of the equipment. During the test we found that only lighting originating from level 137 can illuminate the dark. When we turned on the light we felt a chilling presence as if being spectated by demonic spirits. One operative began to plug in equipment to an electrical outlet when a smiler pulled her into the dark away from the fob. We decided to chase down this instance of Entity 3 to save our operative from death. We ran into the dark armed but stumbled across a corpse slumped against the wall. We knew what it was and returned to the fob before we met the same fate. At our one our second ARI team arrived with the much needed equipment. Our researcher worked overnight to construct a crank flashlight built from a reverse engineered lighting fixture from level 137. This invention proved helpful at illuminating the halls of level 137. The invention has been denominated the Jorgensen device after its inventor. After the second ARI team issued the device to us we went to explore level 137. At hour 2 we have recovered a satisfactory amount of almond water found in cabinets at two kitchens we stumbled upon. When turning to go back we encountered what appeared to be a clump exit in event. We immediately rerouted our path to avoid possible injury and stopped to rest after gaining a reasonable distance from the clump. In doing so, we were spotted by a group of shadow variant face healings. They crept towards us almost as if studying us. We raised our submachine guns and prepared ourselves for conflict. We opened fire on the group and dispatched all nine of them before we arrived at the FOB. Up until our six life in level 137 was quiet and arc. At our six we made a discovery, a new entity we named the Homo Umbrella Searching Rebeings. It was a discovery, yes, but an unwelcome one as our encounter with the Chin Rebeing was lethal to two of our operatives. We left level 137 remembering what our allies gave for our betterment. Conclusion In conclusion, we have designated level 137 to be able to sustain a population as long as a functioning barricade is constructed to prevent entities from jeopardizing operations. We must span our operations further than ever before if we wish to better our society. Entrances and Exits Entrances the most common entrance to level 137 is multiple air vents in level 0, 1, and 4. Air vents leading to level 137 will have a famed humming sound. If it doesn't have this sound it will not lead to level 137. It is important to enter Lex first into vents leading to level 137 as the fall from the vents could result in serious injury if you go ahead first. Exits the only confirmed exits are the ones that also serve as entrances, though an anonymous 4chan user reported that a door with a golden handling level 137 led him to level 20. He stated that he was unable to go back to level 137 via the same door, 